our service will begin in a few moments, at which point all the lights will be extinguished. The lights will be turned back on shortly after the end of the service so that we can depart safely. This is the story of the lengthening of shadows as Jesus sets out on his final journey towards Jerusalem. The cross looms larger, overshadowing now the light of his miracles, the hope of his teachings. The disciples don't yet understand the nature of his calling as their leader speaks of spilt blood, a body broken, of death and the cruel cross. Gathering the twelve disciples around him, Jesus told them, As you know, we are going to Jerusalem, and when we get there, all the predictions of the ancient prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Romans, they will whip him and kill him, but on the third day he will rise again. The disciples did not understand any of this. Its meaning was hidden from them, and they didn't know what he was talking about. The leading priests and Pharisees called the High Council together to discuss the situation. What are we going to do? they asked each other. This man certainly performs many miraculous signs. If we leave him alone, the whole nation will follow him, and then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple and our nation. So from that time on, the Jewish leaders began to plot Jesus' death.
Jesus came to Jerusalem. He said to his disciples, My light will shine out for you just a little while longer. Walk in it while you can, so you will not stumble when the darkness falls. Believe in the light while there is still time. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you be willing to pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for the right time and place to betray Jesus. It was the time of the Passover, and Jesus and his disciples gathered to eat together. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them. And they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, poured out for many, sealing the covenant between God and his people. I solemnly declare that I will not drink wine again until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. And they came to an olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James and John with him. And he began to be filled with horror and deep distress. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. He went on a little further and fell face down on the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he said, Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine.
And even as he said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a mob that was armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent out by the leading priests and other leaders of the people. Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I go over and give him the kiss of greeting. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, teacher, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Jesus said, My friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I some dangerous criminal that you have come armed with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Then the people who arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest. At daybreak, all the leaders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. Jesus was led before this high council. The high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God that you tell us whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, Yes, it is as you say. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror, shouting, Blasphemy! Why do we need other witnesses? You have he all heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He must die. The soldiers took him into their headquarters and called out the entire battalion. They dressed him in a purple robe and made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head. Then they saluted, yelling, Hail, King of the Jews! And they beat him on the head with a stick, spat on him and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified.
He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. From prison and trial, they led him away to his death. But who among the people realised that he was dying for their sins, that he was suffering their punishment? After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A signboard was fastened to the cross above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And the people passing by shouted abuse shaking their heads in mockery. So, you can destroy the temple and build it again in three days, can you? Well then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the other leaders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they, coughed, they scoffed but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. My life is poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength has dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth.
Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look around and see. Is any suffering like my suffering that was inflicted on me, that the Lord brought on me in the day of his fierce anger? Tears flow down my cheeks. No one is here to comfort me. Any who might encourage me are far away. My groans are many, and my heart is faint. Jesus said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. <laughs> 